everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable Sunday. Look, uh, I would normally use this slot to talk about a business opportunity, but there's a lot going on uh, that I want to really at least touch on um, before t today ends. Um, a lot has gone on over the last few days. It's been a very emotional time because uh, Thursday, I believe, I was announcing that I was shutting down the Odyssey Project to the basically for the end of the, at least to the end of the year. Um, and over that four-day period, I've had a lot of time to think, and a lot of things have happened. A lot of people have come to me and um, said that they didn't think that that was the answer. And, encouraging me to continue on and then we have this story that's been developing for a couple of days uh, with Asia Womack the young 21 year old girl and a girl she's a young lady one young 21 year old young lady in Dallas who was shot dead by from what I can tell and the information I've been able to gather a family friend after a basketball game. And this family friend happens to be a male, a 31 year old male shoots a 21 year old male, I mean female, uh, behind losing a basketball game. And there's a lot of people who have jumped on the original video and talked about uh, insinuating circumstances and that it had to be more than that and all that. Well, I'm almost certain uh, just with my understanding of human behavior that it wasn't simply losing a basketball game, but it definitely uh, came at the culmination of losing a basketball game. So that was the thing that tipped the scale. What other things are going on, uh, has gone on? Here's the thing, we have to be very careful in addressing this, that we are aware of the plight of the black man, but that we do not uh, apply excuses to aberrant behavior. Uh, with that being said, I have decided that I am not going to suspend uh, operations and services and programs for the Odyssey Project. This is one reason why I can never bring myself to do it, no matter how little support I tend to get, because I can't, with honesty and authenticity, sit up and say, if my program was uh, adequately funded that that young girl will still be alive that would be disingenuous and it would not be uh, a responsible statement but what I can say is that if my program was adequately adequately funded we wouldn't see that as much we would have a better handle on African-American adolescent and young adult male violence we would have a better handle on the lack of socialization of young black males. We would have a better handle on domestic violence and intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide. We would have a better handle on the dropout rate, incarceration rates. We know that because the program has proven that. We know that because the science is behind it. We know that because I've done the research for years and reported on the research findings for years. And we've taken those findings and put them into applicable programs that can be applied so we know that it works the thing is it needs to be on a national level it needs to be a national network of programs that are designed to fill the gap of the 1.5 million men that are missing and then you got to think out that's 1.5 million men who are missing we got to think about the millions that are erroneously present. What do I mean by that? There are some dads that are actually making things worse because they're there. Because they don't understand what manhood is. They don't understand what uh, the principles of manhood demand of them. And their behavior is setting the wrong example. Their behavior is creating trauma. Their behavior is creating a system of traumatization that is being perpetuated well into the future. And we're seeing that. We're seeing the culmination of results of absent men, uh, men who are functioning outside of the scope of what true manhood is. We're seeing the combination of all of these things come together and create these situations. Uh, I've talked about this for years. This isn't something new. I didn't just pop up on the scene. If you don't know who I am, Google me. You know, just just check out what I've been doing and what I've been screaming from the top. 
I, I mean, we're living in what I predicted 12, 13 years ago. We're living in it right now because we didn't take action. And here's the thing. This isn't nothing compared to how bad it can get. You know, everybody's talking about, oh, my God. You know, he loses a basketball game, goes home, gets a gun, comes back and shoots it. Absolutely. This is a family friend. I don't know how close they were, but according to her mother, they've eaten together and done things together. So they are not uh, strangers. This is somebody he knew and should have had a natural desire to protect. He killed her. And it was, and I'm pretty, it wasn't just I lost a basketball game. It was all the noise being talked during the game. It was all the dudes uh, giving him the business because he got smoked on the basketball court. That's life, though. You don't get to go shoot somebody because you got smoked on the court by a girl. That is it. When you when you step on the court, you, I don't care how confident you are of what you're going to be able to do on that court. The truth of the matter is you're not guaranteed to win. Anything can happen. Uh, you could lose. You got to be able to take an L in life. And I'm not talking about sports alone. I'm talking about you got to be willing and able to take an L in order to be a winner in life. And if you can't handle the L, then it's going to be a lot of situations where you're going to have people imploding. You're going to have a lot of situations where people are going to respond emotionally. We can't have our men doing that. Uh, and men, this isn't that point where you point to a woman about anything. That, this is where you sit up and look at yourself and say, you know what, as a man, I need to hold myself to a certain standard. As a man, there are just certain things I can never allow to happen. As a man, I have to be willing to sit up and say, I'm not perfect, but this will never happen. And some of the things that I can sit up to, I'm never going to bring physical harm to a woman. I don't care what she does or how she behaves. I don't care who she is and what relationship she has with me. I'm never going to bring physical harm to a woman. I'm never going to purposely harm a woman. I'm, and then when it comes to the women that are in my life, I'm never, you're never going to hear me speak publicly ill about them. I'm not going to go around spreading rumors that are true. So uh, just, just, just to sit up and make them look bad or, or, or get my... It doesn't matter what, what, what people think about my side of the story because I really don't care. But I'm never going to do that. So when it comes to me and I sit up and look at it, that, gotta, that has to be something about your manhood that makes you want to stand up and get beyond this tit for tat thing with women this gender war thing is exposing itself in a lot of different ways this is absolutely absurd that we're talking about a dude shooting a female behind losing a bash this would be absurd if it was a dude shooting another dude behind losing the game i don't care if it was money on the game we got to have enough value for our lives that we look at a person and sit up and say, man, I want to whoop your ass so bad. But you know what? The one thing I'm not going to do is put myself in a situation where we're going to harm one another. We got too much things we need to do together. And that should be the same thing with us men and women. There are too many things we need to be doing together to be warring against each other. But I tell you what, man, you keep killing them. They're never going to trust you. And if they never trust you, they're never going to come with you. And you need them just as much as they need you. And what we're doing is we're destroying an entire opportunity to come together and do something. And it's not by accident. Everything is being set up and we're just falling into it. We're our worst. And if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. African proverb. So what am I saying? I'm saying we've got some things we need to do. There are some things we're going to have to change about us. I've been telling you about Black Man Lee for a long time. I've been doing the work. I've been helping a lot of people. But compared to the 45 million people and the people I'm helping, it's a small drop in the bucket. But it's going to be a different. They're going to be, they, these, these people are going to be positive. And I mean, I'm helping people from all walks of life, all different backgrounds, all different histories, from people coming from poverty, from people who are more affluent families, from people who have been through incarceration. None of that matters to me. What matters to me is where you're headed, not where you're coming from, where you're headed. I'll take anybody and I'll show you that. It doesn't matter where you've been, it's where you're going. And I'm telling you, we can do that. And then if we take the younger ones and we racially socialize them before they ever meet the turbulence of this system, then we don't have to worry about them exploding and imploding and, 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 and going off 
like 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 what we're seeing this is a result of things that we haven't confronted and they're coming back to nip us in the butt we're gonna have to deal with mental health we're gonna have to deal with emotional health we're gonna have to deal with absentee parenting we're gonna have to deal with er erroneous parenting we're gonna have to deal with the fact that we are not preparing our children to go out into this world this is the reality and it's that simple if you're serious about doing something, show some love, support the work I'm doing, show some love, get with me and find out how you can be a part of this. I mean, actually, individually and collectively, that has to be greater work going on. There has to be some people who are going to be people who are committed. I want you to think about this. Tell me it makes sense. And it's been a couple of people that have been trying to explain it. And I, I've been very careful not to just straight go off. But for, for a person who's got any kind of oomph about them as a man, tell me how that makes sense. You lose a basketball game to a female. For whatever reason, that does you a certain type of way. So you go home and get a gun and shoot somebody that you probably could physically harm. There's a whole bunch of things that I could go through that I'm not going to do right now because that's not why I'm here. But that really bothers me. And the problem is it's not an anomaly. The reason I'm sitting here is that this isn't some one-off thing that popped up. And you go, man, that's crazy. No, this is something I've been warning you guys about for years. And you keep taking it casually. You keep, yeah, doc, pat on the back. You, you're awesome, doc. You're telling me I'm awesome. Clicking the like button doesn't save lives. I don't need my ego stroke. I'm not I'm not like dude. I don't need nobody to tell me I'm awesome. I'm not afraid of losing. I'm not afraid of being in a bad situation. I'm not afraid of being down. Nothing is going to cause me to harm me or anybody else that isn't trying to harm me or my family. If you're not trying to harm me and those I love, I am not looking to harm you. I don't care what's going on. So I don't have an ego to the point. Somebody's got to come along and tell me uh, I'm awesome. I'm good. No, my grandmother did that when I was two and three years old. My teachers did that in school from four, fifth, sixth, all the way through high school. I've been acknowledged my entire life. So I don't need anybody to do that for me. I acknowledge myself. I know what I am. I know what I was yesterday. I know what I am today. I know what I'll be tomorrow or close to it. So I don't need that. What I do need is people to realize that what I've been trying to share with y'all is real. That it's starting to show up in real life and it's hitting hard and it's not going to stop because we think it's awful. It's not going to stop because we think it's horrible. It's not going to stop until we actually start investing in doing the things that stops it. That's it. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here, get in uh, and, and try to unwind for a little bit. It's been one of those weeks, uh, but I'm not I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up uh, for the people who call me and, and, and express uh how they believe that what I do is important and that uh, they're going to try to get involved the best way they can uh, and do some things. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Look, I'm out of here, you guys. I'll talk to you later.